In this video, I'm going to show an example for how to find the maximum and minimum values of a function using the method of Lagrange multipliers. So in order to use this method, you have to have a constraint equation, which is in this case called G, and it's set equal to zero. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up finding values of X, Y, and Z, and then a scalar, which we're using the Greek letter lambda, um, that satisfy the relationship the gradient of f, our function, equals a multiple, a lambda multiple of the gradient of g, our constraint function. So we're going to work through an example for this. Okay, so our example says to find the extreme values, meaning maximum and minimum, of this given function, x squared times y times z plus 1. And then the constraint equation here, there's actually two of them. It's the intersection of the plane z equals 1 with the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 10. So two constraint equations, which we'll put together um, using substitution. Okay, so we know what we're looking for. We're looking eventually for x, y, and z, and then our lambda scalar that satisfy this equation involving the gradients. Now let's first start with the constraint equation. We're gonna set this sphere equation equal to zero just by bringing over the 10, and we're gonna intersect it with z equals one. So notice I just subtracted 10, and then where there's a z, I plugged in a 1. So our constraint equation g is x squared plus y squared minus 9 equals 0. So we're going to need both gradients, gradient vectors, one for g and one for f. So first, for g, remember how the gradient is found. It's the partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and z, respectively. So the partial derivative of this function here with respect to x is just 2x with respect to y is 2y, and with respect to z is nothing, it's zero, because there's no z's here. Now we find the gradient of our function f, same concept, partial derivatives. So if you look back here at your function here, um, the partial derivative with respect to x, you're gonna have 2x, and then times, think of y and z as constants, so times the constants y and z, and then the partial derivative with respect to y, the derivative of y is 1 times the constants x squared times z, and then very similar for the last component. We also still have the fact that z is 1, so when we plug that in, we get this gradient vector for f. Then we want to put these two together with our e equation that the gradient of f is actually a multiple of the gradient of g. Okay, and so in the next slide, I'm going to break this into a system of equations. We're going to break apart the i, j, and k components of this equation. Okay, so from before, we have the gradient of f is a multiple, a lambda multiple of the gradient of g, and we have now a system of equations. First, the constraint equation is still part of this system, and then we have three new equations from the i, j, and k components of this equation up here. And we're gonna just address them um, as they come up. So let's start with one. So we're gonna consider equation one. Uh, first, all I did was subtract the two x, y to the other side of the equal sign, and then I factored. So we factor out the two x, and that gives us two options for our answers. Because the product here is zero, we know either the x was zero or lambda minus y is zero. And so we have two possibilities. So we're gonna explore both of those. First, starting with if x is 0. So if x is 0, go back into your constraint equation and put in x equals 0. You end up with y squared is 9, giving you some y values. So this is good because, remember, we're trying to find x, y, and z. So y is plus and minus 3. That ends up giving you two points, and we're going to end up having a list of points, and this is where the maximum and minimum values would occur. So we have a list of points that we're finding, x, y, and z, and then if there's a max and min, it would occur at somewhere on our list, some points on our list. x was 0, y um, was plus or minus 3, and then z was 1 from our plane up here. We were told z is 1. Okay, so same situation, but now we're going to consider the second possibility that lambda is equal to y. So if y is lambda, we're going to actually substitute that into equation 2 up here from our system of equations. We end up getting x squared equals 2y squared. 
and then we're going to plug that back into our constraint equation. So all I did here was take the fact that x squared is 2y squared and plug that in. And you combine like terms and you end up with 3y squared is 9. When you solve for y, you end up with y is plus and minus square root 3. Okay, so we're going to take that. We, we need x still, so we have some y values. We're going to take that and plug it back into equation 2. And this is going to give us our x values, plus and minus square root 6. And what we actually have here is a combination of these, um, all these values, and that's going to give us four points, positive and negative square root 6 in combination with positive and negative square root 3. Well, z is still 1. So four more points to add to our list. All right, we are still going to have to consider one more possibility, um, equation number three. If you solve this, either x is 0 or y is 0. We already looked at what happens when x is 0, so we just need to do one more thing and look at if y is 0. Plugging that into our constraint equation, we get that x squared is 9, giving us two x values. And we already know that y was 0, so two more points to add to our list. Okay, so we have our list of equations, our list of um, points, and we found these all through our process of using the Lagrange multipliers method. We plug each of these in individually back into our function because what we're looking for is our highest and lowest or biggest and smallest function values, and they would occur at these points. And so after you plug in these numbers for x, y, and z, you'll find out there's a lot of repeats. But the biggest number you're going to get out of your function is square root um, 3 times 6 plus 1. And then negative 6 square root 3 plus 1 is the smallest. And so what you end up with is you have a maximum value of about 11.4. And that happens at two separate points on your function. And then a minimum value of about negative 9.4. And that happens at two different points on your function.